Have you ever wondered what people are saying about you online? Maybe what an ex-employee says after they get fired? Or uh, maybe you have a customer who maybe was less than happy and you tried everything you could to make it right and they just weren't gonna get happy? Today we're gonna talk about how do you become a chief listening officer? How do you have your ear to the ground and listen to what people are saying? So not just about marketing, but also about listening. Let's talk Google Alerts. Maybe you've heard of it, maybe you've set it up. Most people have it set up wrong. <laughs> so let's talk about Google Alerts. There are lots of listening tools out there. I'm gonna give you some advice around one that's been there for a long time and it is incredibly underutilized. Google Alerts, so google.com slash alerts, is a wonderful way to listen to what people are saying about you who love you, as well as the people who maybe, eh, they're not so happy with you, or it's just a crazy. There's always a crazy. Have you ever been on Amazon and you're looking down the reviews and there's the one with eight paragraphs? <laughs> and you're like, okay, no. <laughs> you know that that guy's crazy. And you're not gonna really take that, you're not gonna take that to heart in most cases. But I think as business owners, we forget to listen because we're always thinking about marketing, marketing, marketing. We gotta protect our stuff, right? We wanna make sure that people aren't talking smack about us. So Google Alerts is gonna help us be that chief listening officer. So go to google.com slash alerts. I'm gonna give you three specific pieces of advice that are going to make Google Alerts work for you. The first thing is delete all your alerts. If you have 800 alerts in there, delete, 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 just get rid of them right now. And then we're gonna go back and we're gonna start again. Now Google Alerts is a little different. You can either be logged into a Gmail account, which is fine, or you can be logged out and just have those alerts sent directly to your current email address. Super simple, you'll see it right there on the Google Alerts page. The next one is make sure to use quotes, like air quotes, air quote around any phrase that you wanna keep your ear to the ground. Like you wanna be listening, like you're literally laying on the ground with your ear laying, what are people saying about me? Google Alerts will let you put your name in there, it'll let you put any proprietary products, remember the quotes, and it will let you put competitor names. Ooh, I can watch competitors and see what they're up to. Should we be doing that? I hadn't thought about that. I mean, use that strategically. Also, follow clients. If you have clients that you are working with, you wanna be in the know about what's happening with their business. So make sure to follow clients, in quotes, of course. Now, here's one of my ninja tips, if you will, is take a section of copy off your website. Just off the homepage, like a little paragraph. My website has been stolen at least six or seven times. I've lost track. So my Google Alerts tell me when someone has taken a piece of content off my website. When people steal, they steal everything. I take a little piece of copy off my homepage, I copy and paste it, and I pop it in a Google Alert with quotes. Now, if anyone takes my stuff, I'm gonna be alerted that they took my exact stuff. Also, make sure to follow your social media handles in quotes because I've had my Facebook page taken a number of times, pictures of all my kids, all my pictures from events, it was this guy in like Switzerland. It was so bizarre. And I just called Facebook and I said, hey, <laughs> that's not me. And they took it right down. I wouldn't have known about that if I hadn't had Google Alerts set up properly. Google Alerts is a fantastic way. Now here's the problem with alerts. So this, on the other hand, is that we go what I call email blind. <laughs> Where you're like, oh God, another alert. I'm just gonna put that over there in this folder right there. And I'm not gonna look at that folder. The problem is people have to look at your alerts. So whether you wanna sign your assistant or your marketing people, someone has to be watching those alerts because they're important. They're not just like news press releases. They are people who are saying things about that exact phrase. Remember we put in quotes, that exact phrase. So we don't wanna ignore those, but I know you're busy. As a leader in your company, as an executive, you're busy, I get it. But you need to make sure that someone is being your chief listening officer because man alive, when it hits the fan, you wanna be the first to know. You don't want a colleague calling you and saying, did you see this? Or you're at a conference and someone's like, dude, bummer, you didn't see that? Um, so that's the first thing, Google Alerts. Now there's a couple other things that as a business owner, I wanna make sure that you have claimed. The first thing is glassdoor.com. Now Glassdoor is where people who have left, people leave in, under less than ideal circumstances mostly, They've got a little free time on their hands now and they're a little disgruntled. So they say, okay, great. I'm going to go in and I'm going to flame. 
And one of the places where they flame is on glassdoor.com. So you want to go into glassdoor.com. You'll see a tab that's at the top of the page that says for employers. Click on that tab and then you'll be able to go through claim your account. Now, once you've claimed it, you want to load it up with your best photos. Because remember, there's always the crazy. So people are smart. They're not just going to take the one that is the crazy six paragraph one. They know that person is mad. <laughs> They've had a less than ideal experience. So what happens is that people who are upset tend to complain 10 times more than people who love you. What's important here is that you protect yourself. You buffer your listing in Glassdoor because it will rank right under your domain name. If you Google yourself and you see Glassdoor, that means you got to get in there, you got to claim it, you got to put your best pictures up there. And then as the CEO, you want to go in and post the very first. Here at XY Corporation, we believe in this. Here's our corporate culture. Here's what we believe in. And here's why we do what we do every day. And if you can get in there and be the first to post, right? Because you are the CEO of that company. You want to make sure that you are controlling the story around your own company. Now, here's the next part is ask people who have been with you since the dawn of time. You know who these people are. They're not going anywhere. They're going to be the one that closes the, locks the door and turns off the lights when you close the business. Go to those people and say, once a month, I want you to go in and just ask them very nicely, give them a Starbucks card maybe, and have them write a nice little, little quip about your company. We just forget to ask the people who love us. We forget to ask. And in, these same rules apply to Yelp. If you have a physical address, you are on Yelp. Everyone's on Yelp. It's not just restaurants. It's not just, you know, clothing places. It's everybody. And the rye is that if someone goes in there and reviews something negative about you, it will show up under your name in search results in a New York minute. It'll be like, boom, right there. And then you'll have another one. Boom. It's the glass door. And now you're two down to people who think, who are flaming about your company. This is going to directly affect your ability to close business. It's also going to directly affect your, your ability to get good quality candidates that are applying for jobs. All right. So my last bit of, uh, <laughs> it's kind of a funny story actually. In my twenties, I worked for a company called Video Professor. It was not a good job. Actually, I got fired from that job. It was the last time I had a real job job. And that's why I'm self-employed for the last 15 years because I'm too bossy to have a boss. <laughs> so with that said, I recommend that you buy your domain sucks, S-U-C-K-S dot com. When I was at Video Professor, we had a disgruntled employee who left. He had a lot of free time on his hands. He bought videoprofessorsucks.com. Now you might be wondering, well, there's a lot of other maybe more phrases we could put in that domain. The problem is, is that those, all those profanity, if you will, that you would put in there, get, they get um, suppressed by safe search. So safe search is always on unless you turn it off in Google that prevents all the porn from showing up in search results. But the sucks could be a vacuum, could be a lollipop. You don't, it's not filtered. So there's Levi sucks and Comcast sucks. There's all kinds of websites that, and they know that if we put sucks on the end, that people know what that is. It's a common convention. So buy your domain with the word sucks.com. The reason being is because once someone gets that and they put a bunch of content in there, it's going to rank under your corporate name forever. When I was a video professor, it took us over a year to suppress that listing. I mean, I can't imagine how much revenue did we lose because people saw that right under our corporate brand. I don't want that for you. And trust me, trying to do triage on something after it happens is much more difficult than getting ahead of it. Own your brand, own your name. And Google Alerts is a great way to keep your ear to the ground, make sure that you're protecting your brand assets online. Your reputation is everything online. And I want it to look the very best it can be. Hey, don't forget, if you like this video, make sure to hit subscribe, ring the bell that's right next to it so you get alerted to my new videos. I love what I do. I love geeking out about SEO. So I will see you on my next video. Go and set up those Google Alerts right now.